Hey guys, Sequoma City, we are off, we are running, we're having a blast. Actually, we're having way too much fun. <laughs> this can't be a job. All right, before we get going though, I just want to say Terry Broadbent loves Redgate tools and hopes to learn more about the tools today. Terry, I guarantee you, you're going to learn more about the tools today. All right, so we're going to start talking about uh, SQL Clone. This one I am actually really excited about. So my name is Grant Fritchie. Um, I work for Redgate Software. This is my contact information. If you've got questions about any of the Redgate tools after today, after anything we go over today, please get in touch. If you want to talk about database lifecycle management, if you want to talk about DevOps, if you want to talk about um, being a DBA, doing query tuning, I'm your guy. I will try to help. This is my contact info. You can get directly in touch with me, scarydba.com, uh, grant at scarydba.com. That's my email. So this. Richard McCaskill. So I'm a product manager for SQL Clone. And uh, you can contact me. Any questions about database provisioning, if you want to talk to me about that, if you want to talk to me about the more sophisticated use cases, the masking, the subsetting, all the things that you need to do around provisioning, that's my email address there. Or get me at uh, datamacast on Twitter. Uh, just fire some questions over. Happy to talk to you. Excellent. All right, so our goals today, basically we're introducing you to SQL Clone. We're really excited about SQL Clone. We think it's a great tool. But we also want to talk about why, why we're introducing this tool, what need we think it fills, um, what part of your DevOps process that we think this is going to plug into really well, because we think it is going to. Um, we are absolutely committed to DevOps, and you know, personally, we believe in it. Um, so so we, you know, we've got a lot, of, a lot of dedication in that area. But I think this thing is great. I mean, we're, and we really are talking about provisioning for your dev, for your QA team. And let's talk about why. The whole thing is, is that, um, you know, what's, what's the, what does every dev team want? Data. No, they want data. <laughs> the dev teams don't want data. They don't care about data. What do they want when they have to use data? The real data. They prod want data. real data. They want prod data. They want production data, right? Yeah, no. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, the problem is, is that, you know, we, we have to match the volumes on production data. That's a lot. You know, I mean, if you get a, you know, one terabyte production system, that, that's a lot. You know, I mean, you got to move around a bunch of stuff. Um, if you're trying to mirror the distribution of production data, you know, it, because, you know, fine, you, you know, it's like, okay, you can't have production data, but you want something that looks a lot like it. You know, I mean, it, it, you know, it's got to have the same kind of, you know, if we have a million rows of, uh, that are all saying New York, you know, you want to be able to replicate that into, into your, you know, dev environment. Yeah, it's not all good on their laptops though, is it? Right, well, no. <laughs> but also, you got to, you worry about repeatable testing. You know, the whole, the whole concept of like, like having this stuff run over and over again. You know, it's got to be able to work the same way every time um, from a testing standpoint, otherwise you can't do testing automation. And oh, by the way, accuracy. Um, you want to be able to understand that, that what's going on from your production system, um, you know, inside of development, inside of testing, inside of QA, inside of pre-prod, um, you know, whatever the environments are, um, that it all mirrors the production environment in some way. And, and you know, it's just that whole concept of getting data that, that looks real, right? Prod data. Except, you know, you can't have that um, for many reasons. For example, number one, space. Um, prod data, great. One terabyte of prod data for the QA team and for the dev team. And, oh, wait, I'm sorry, the other dev team. And, oh, the dev branch. And, yeah, <laughs> no. This, is, this makes it really hard. So if we're talking about the realistic prod data, um, when we're talking about multiple branches and multiple teams, then we're multiplying this stuff out and we're making bigger and bigger and bigger and broader. Um, personally, I like isolated environments. I want my dev teams mm -hmm. to be able to split. Um, I want my, each of the, my individuals on the team to be able to split and they all don't step on each other's toes and break up stuff. And if you make a change, it doesn't affect me until I've checked in my code, checked out my stuff, and I'm ready for that change to hit me, right? Yeah, that's well documented. Read the State of DevOps report. You know, that's, it's all in there. Isolated right. dev is safe. Isolated dev is safe dev, right? But that means that we're also multiplying this stuff out even further. Now, for example, a uh, place I used to work, uh, we had eight times production data inside of our dev and QA environments. Eight times. Now, granted, the you know, vendors who sell disks loved us. But no one else did. <laughs> it was incredible. So I mean, you're going to hit these issues, and this is another problem. Another problem is the shared environments. You know, if you have multiple development teams all trying to share one environment, you, you hit issues. As we if, just, if you've lived it, you know it. You know, yeah, yeah. Oh my god. Even yeah. your great team, this, this hurts. If you've got multiple developers on your team, 
which I mean, because everybody does all their development with one guy and no one, you know, no one else, right? One, one lady and no one else. No? No. No, we actually have more than one person working yeah, on teams. Yeah, it's not just you. Yeah, no, there's a few. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he's the only one I ever see. I don't think he's telling the truth. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Of course, there's multiple people. Um, so there's multiple teams, multiple people on the teams. Further, there's multiple branches on code. So we're, you know, this whole concept of a shared environment for dev is crazy. You've got to move away from this because you're going to be stepping on each other's toes. I don't care how well you get along. You get along as well as Richard and I do, and we do get along. You're still going to be hitting issues. Um, if, you know, if you make a change to the stuff I'm working on, <laughs> we will talk. Yeah. A lot. Um, but you've got these branches, you've got the hot fix, you've got new development, you've got all these multiple branches going on, and then you've got testing on top of that for each of these teams. So the provisioning of this stuff gets insane. So all of this stuff is adding up. It gets worse. Let's talk about regulatory compliance. If you work in healthcare, if you work in banking, if you work in insurance, you've got to meet legal requirements. You know what men's rea is? Uh, go and tell me, Grant. Okay, What's cool. <laughs> he actually knows. He's heard this talk a couple of times. So men's rea, I love this term. I love this term. I love this term. It means with knowledge. Okay, so I've got some bad news for you. I'm now going to give you some knowledge and then you will be mens rea. If you knowingly violate some of the rules in, char in, in, in terms of, say, healthcare, you share a patient's information with someone who is not authorized and you do this with knowledge, you get to go to jail. Yay! Even if you do it without knowledge, even if you do it by accident, you can be held liable um, for, for monetary damages, or certainly your company can be held liable for monetary damages. So there's a whole slew of regulatory compliance that requires us to not give the devs the one thing they want, which is? Production data. Production real data, data. Yeah, yeah, the real data, the production data. Legally, you know, I love you, I want to help you, <laughs> but you're not getting production data because I'm not going to jail, mm -hmm. so he gets better data. It ain't happening. So, you know, it's just, it's just not the way it works. So we've got to avoid all this stuff. All of these things are adding up to make things bad. I mean, problematic. And it's not just that. Let's, let's get rid of jail. Let's not talk about jail, you know, because that's a depressing topic. You know, I don't want a roommate named Tiny. I mean, it's, let's talk about email. Let's talk about customer information. Let's talk about the fact that I worked for a company um, when a production guy, uh, well, I'm sorry, where a dev guy asked me for the d database and I was a young, you know, energetic young DBA who di really didn't know what the heck he was doing. So I gave him the production data, untouched. He proceeded to send an email, as he was testing out part of the email system, he sent an email to our entire customer list. And don't you know this developer had a sense of humor? It was an adult themed email. Ow. Yeah, ow. ow. Lots of meetings, long meetings, you know, discussing how we will never let this happen ever again. Right? Horrible stuff. Horrible. So there's all of this, all of this adds up to talking about problems with data, problems with data and development, and problems making it so we can provision everything that you guys need to do inside of development. It gets worse. As we move faster, as you move into a DevOps thing, dev is moving more towards ops. Ops is having to move more towards dev. You're going to cross the streams a whole lot more. You're going to do a lot more. You have to have more teams, more testing, more processes, more provisioning, all of it with the same DBA team. You know, it's one person, two person, three people. Great, good job. But now you've got more stuff you have to deliver faster. <laughs> cool. Because running that one terabyte restore 15 times is going to be quick, yes? Anybody? Anybody? No? It's going to be slow. So what do we do? Introducing SQL Clone. <laughs> we think this is the answer. What is it? It's database provisioning. It's a database cloning tool that allows you to create editable copies of databases in seconds. Isolated environments. That man's lying. It can't be done in seconds. <laughs> Seriously? Did I mention the disk space? No. Using very little disk space. For each copy, you're look, looking at 40, 50, 60 megabytes of data. All right, all right. So you're talking magic. Database. This is magic. You're just, you're just, you're lying to me. This is just magic. Okay. Would I lie to you? Well, you might. Yeah, okay. I might, <laughs> but I'm not on this occasion. Okay. 
<laughs> well, let's see. What, what, how, how does it work? Okay. Okay, SQL clone. So it's, it's virtualization. It's storage virtualization as supplied by the 64-bit Windows operating system. So it's been in Windows for a good while. Microsoft have been firming up this technology for, for, for many, many years. And what we've done is we're applying it to the database in a way that it's never really been applied before. So it's the virtual disk service that you have on your Windows machine. It's the volume shadow copy that you have on your Windows machine. It's not some wacky driver intercepts or something that's intervening between you and SQL Server or anything hmm. like that. Shall I tell you how it works? Yeah, I want to know how it two works. Stage, two-stage process. So, I, I still don't trust you. It still sounds like magic. <laughs> so first of all, it's a two-stage <laughs> process. So DBAs, IT managers, people who are doing database provisioning just now or want to do more of it, the people who are moving those copies around for those different environments, one for dev, one for three streamlined, swim lane dev I used to use, what, okay. team one, two, three. Um, that's what three sets of copies of your production databases. <laughs> At least. Um, you've got QA, staging, pre-prod, prod parallel, all the rest of them. Yeah. Every one of those is a copy of the sets of databases that you need to make your software work. Um, there's a lot of byte shoveling. Useless bytes that aren't going to get changed. They're not going to get switched. They're, they're just yeah. bytes that are going to stay in that same state forever for the whole life cycle of that database in that environment. So what we're saying with SQL clone is, yes, you do have to copy those bytes at some point. You have to create a data image. So step one is a one-off copy of the bytes that make up the MDF and LDF files of your database. Okay. You take those from a backup or from a live connection to a SQL server. You might want to use a backup if you want to be, if you're one of those people that can't even, right, 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 don't yeah. breathe on production. Just step, don't, yeah, don't step even look away at from it. production, just hit the backup. Take the backup okay. file. All that right. might be the one that works for you, or you can use it from a live uh, connection to a SQL server database. Uh, wait, wait, wait. A live connection to my database. But then as transactions are going on, it's going to it's gonna mess up everything. It, it makes it's the a point in time. It's like hitting a backup. It's, it's like saying, take a backup. This is the point in time. So that bit's kind of like what people do now for provisioning. You know, they oh, take a backup. So it's a page by page copy, like, yeah, like page a by page copy, like it's backup, like a backup. Oh, so, but cool. instead, instead of putting those bytes, locking them away in a .dot back file or .dot sqb file, if you're using the Redgate backup, instead of doing that and then having to use that over and over again, what we're saying is take those bytes and put them into uh, probably a Windows file share, just somewhere s somewhere shared that you can access from all your environments. Put it somewhere on your LAN. And we call this a data image repository. Okay, in right. SQL yeah, Clone. Yeah. Take those bytes, up to two terabytes for each database, put them there. That's probably going to be part of your overnight process, probably going to be part of your maintenance window. And from that point, you can get to the second stage. And this is where it gets really good. This is right. where when you want to mount a database from that data image based on that point in time, or from a manipulated copy, you might tweak it. We'll talk about that later. Right, yeah, yeah, let's get um, that, yeah. But we'll get to that. But if you want to make database copies, you can create clones in seconds, about four or five seconds, doesn't matter on the size of the database. You can create dozens of them. You're reusing those bytes. Ah, no, no, it's just no. smart byte reuse. So you're reusing those bytes over and over again. It takes a few, a few megabytes and a few seconds. I don't believe you. Well, I'll show you. Okay, cool. Show me, because I've got to see it. <laughs> I am from the show me state, so I've got to see this. And the one other thing to mention about um, your clone database is it's fully editable. You can use it just like any other database. SQL Server sees it as any other database, but the virtual disk service holds your changes in a local differencing file. Oh, this is cool. It's a differencing disk. So the data image is immutable. That stays right. the way it was when you took that snapshot, when you made it the way you wanted it to be. All right, all right. I believe you. Go on. Ish. Show me. I'll show you. But oh, first uh, of all. Oh, yeah, first of all. Hey, why do we do this? <laughs> <laughs> we forgot. So why? <laughs> Go ahead. So, I mean, we've been speaking to a lot of uh, people for, for the, the previous months about this. You know, lots of people are doing database provisioning. Everybody's got to make some changes, but why do they do it? Why do they make the uh, pay, pay, all, pay all this pain go through all this hassle? Well, one of the reasons is to get production-like data there, to get pr either production or the manipulated production into an environment where people can work with it. But even when they do. They're having the developers, the QA people, the business analysts, are having to share those same resources. Right. And, hey, Bob, can I use this one? Are you sure? Are you sure you didn't touch this one? Because my results are right, a bit funny. Right. You know? Yeah, the tests aren't working. We can Automation give them local copies. Down. Oh yeah. Local copies with a fraction of the disk space. When you don't, when you no longer have to worry about the disk space, you're much more likely to be able to give people isolated copies. Heck yeah. Not overwriting each other's changes. Hit it till it works. Right. And then share. Share when right. you're ready. Yeah. Share when you're ready. Don't exactly. be in forced sharing mode. You know and test against the realistic data. You don't want to encounter production-like data 
in the, production. The first time for the production. first time. Right, yeah, exactly. But it's DevOps, it's moving problems left. Right. You don't like left. It's moving in what, anti-clockwise. Yeah, well, yeah anti-clockwise, <laughs> there we go. It's moving them to the place Vitter where sheets. you can do something about it and it's not too late and you're not going to get called into the boss's office. Right. It's doing something about it when you, when you, at the right time. You can use it in application debug scenarios if you want to reproduce a, a production pr fault. Okay. It makes you much more capable of saying, just spin up a copy, let me have a look at that. Right. And it reduces that time to analysis, so you get cool. to the fix faster. Excellent. All right, let's see it. Now I want okay. to see it. Now, yeah. now hey, demo. now we're right. Hey, hey. Do a demo. Yeah, yeah, go for it. Right. I'm going to step over here. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, so first of all, let me just take you through step by step that uh, sort of two-stage process. So I'm, I'm going to do the, uh, the, the very basic operation. I'm going to create a, a, a data image. So this is the SQL clone interface. It's a, it's a web app. It's a central management server. And it controls uh, agents that perform the operations on SQL Server instances. So I'm going to create an image, and I'm going to choose to do it from a SQL Server in this case. And I'm going to have a look at the SQL Server instances that I've got registered here. I've got one on my uh, local laptop. Let's just have a look at what's available there. And I'm going to take AdventureWorks, because I know it's a couple of hundred meg. It's not going to take a, a painful amount of time. And I'm going to give it a sensible name. So AdventureWorks, we'll call it 15. December 2016. Um, this is just something that, uh, of course, you'd manipulate those names. You'd come up with your own naming system for different f branches. We've got people have been using prototypes of this software for a good few months now, and uh, a lot of them come up with a sort of naming scheme. It might be a Jira ticket that's associated with a piece of work that you have to do for those copies. Once you once you can create these uh, data images and a collection of them, a repository of them, you, you figure out. And we'll 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 find out what people really need to be added onto this metadata that we store about uh, the data images as well as we get more and more users. Um, did I mention this is in beta at the moment? Um, we're working towards a release. We're just working through the, the details of exactly what people need us to do. Um, so uh, we'll be adding to that. We'll be adding functionality. Um, we'll be adding different interfaces. Um, I'm going to show you a little bit of PowerShell uh, to control the, um, the creation of images and the creation of clones um, in a little moment. And we've got, uh, I think we're actually a little bit further than halfway in this uh, creating an image. Uh, let's see how our progress bar is uh, faithfully representing the create image. And uh, when we've got that, of course, this is the long running bit. Remember, this is phase one. This but is the, this is the one off. But this, shift. but this is the backup, right? I mean, this is, yeah, this this is, is basically taking the amount, same amount of time as a backup goes. Yeah. Uh, oh, I was turned off. My mic was turned off. I asked a question. <laughs> the question I asked is that this is a backup. Uh -huh. um, so this is taking about the same amount of time as a backup yeah. does because it's still a page by page copy. Yeah, we're moving okay. the bytes around. Right, okay. So I'll shut this, up now. This is the byte shifting. Right, go ahead. We're shoveling bytes, but we're not doing it again and again for the environment. So that's finished. Uh, let's have a look on the uh, dashboard and I can see that this has got a. This has been created as a data image. This is me creating it. This, it was taken from AdventureWorks 2012. And uh, let's just create a clone from here. Um, so I'm going to select uh, that data image that I just created. I'm going to select the instance I'm going to deliver it to. I'll do it for my demo laptop. And let's just give it a, there's no reason to name them underscore. I always do because I can see them at the top of the list. Um, let's create a clone. Um, this is the operation that's it's created. What it's doing just now, and I'll show you under the hood in a moment, what it's doing just now is it's creating a mount point to those 290 bytes. This is virtualization. This is the uh, storage virtualization that's wait, built that, into but, Windows. But that's done already. That's done. Let's do another but the, one. But the backup took like you know three minutes or whatever, two minutes, and that thing's done already. Yeah, because it's not shifting bytes around. Let's do another one. Uh, AW clone 2. I hate your naming so, convention, by the way. Really? Okay, yeah. you can you can pick your own. Okay, <laughs> cool. on, on your instance, you on can do your instance, own. On mine, instance, I do okay. what I want. On mine, it, goes, it looks like this. Okay, oh, well, so what have I got finished. there? Forty meg there. Let's have a look at SQL Server Management Studio because that's you know that can't be right. Okay, there's a database. It's AdventureWorks. It's the full database. Huh. Let's query it. The data's all there. It's not just schema. Wow. All the data's there. It's perfectly workable. You can use this for your development and test cases. Let's do a slightly bigger one, just a little bit more um, interesting. 
Let's have a look. You might have seen just in zooming past there that I've got Stack Overflow, the Stack Overflow database that Brent Ozar provides that's super cool for testing and Right, right. And 100, 100 gigs of, of useful data. Yeah, 98 gig of data, real data, the real back end to a real application uh, that the people use. Uh, and I've created a, a data image from that. Now, that, again, it, I was shifting 98 gig of data right, around, so, that, so that, I'm not going to do that in a demo. That, that, takes, that takes however long it takes. I, I mean, did, that's, that's normal. I did that overnight, took a few hours. Um, I'm going to create a clone from that. There's my Stack Overflow database. I'm going to deliver that to my local instance, and I'm going to call that Stack Overflow Clone 1. This is a huge database, so right. how long is this going to take? Oh. Hey, wait, that was only eight seconds. Yeah, okay. Let's have <laughs> another one. Let's do it again. I'm going to do. I'm going to do clone two because I've got two pieces of work to do on this database. I don't want them. Right, so yeah, so like you have two different mess branches up my work. Or, or something, right? One I'm running some tests against, I'm figuring out what I want to do. Another piece I've got a bit of analysis to figure out what I need to do for some development work. Uh, yeah, I might have miscounted. Was, that was six seconds. Yeah. Um, okay. This is on a crummy laptop. Um, wow. There's my Stack Overflow database. Let's have a look at the properties in there. SQL Server, there's no trickery here. It sees all those bytes. It sees it as a full-size database. Can you see oh, that? Yeah, 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 I can see 90, that. Yeah, cool. 90-something gig. Uh, and again, let's run some, some queries on it. Let's have a look at the Stack Overflow Clone 1. Top, top 100 without an order by? Are you sure about that? That we might want to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> I like top 100 star, but okay. what's wrong with that? Uh, you can see some familiar data in there. You can see uh, Jeff Fatwood, Joel Spolsky, all the people who are around right, setting yeah, up yeah. Stack Overflow. Uh, let's yeah, have a look. Let's have a look at the most recent posts. What are people asking? Uh, okay, there's the most recent. This was a snap taken as of uh, sort of March this right, year. Right, yeah, sure. So. Um, it's the most recent there. Huh. Um, there's a queries. Wow. Uh, let's perform an operation. I'm going to stick a thousand rows in there. Uh, just get a stupid little loop there. Stick a thousand rows in. That's done. They're there. Um, well, we could talk about how to do that as, as a batch sometime if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> I know what I need to know, okay? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, what do we do there? We, we stuck in some data there. How can I learn SQL? It's a typical Stack Overflow question. How can I learn SQL, please? Excellent. Um, I've got some data there on Stack Overflow Clone 1. Uh, Stack Overflow Clone 2, I've got the original data. They're isolated, wow. they're completely separate. They're sharing the bytes they need to share, they're not sharing the ones that have changed, that are on the different disk. This is fantastic. Disk. Cool. So I said I'd have a look under the hood. Right. Let's find out what's really happening there. So let's have a look at the uh, where those files are. So the files that, uh, that SQL Clone has created for me, are here. See, now I've customized my mount point. I've said clone, go and put them there. You can customize it at installation right. time. Sure, sure. Because uh, that's kind of convenient to me. So let's go and have a look there. Yeah, uh, it says there it's 98 megs so, or gigs. So 98 gigs. But I haven't, hang on, I can't be right because I haven't got 98 gigs. What have I got here? I've got 25 gig. I had 25 gig before. Yeah. I should have showed you. I could be lying. Yeah, you, I could be lying. Yeah, but I, I, I'm, I, I'm assuming you're not lying. <laughs> Okay, let's have a look in there. I put them in so stack over SQL clone beta. Clones. I've created four clones, you remember? Right, yeah. I've yeah. got four folders there, and I've got a VHD mount point. It's like a symlink in, in Unix or Linux. Sure. It's not, those bytes are not there. Two those, bytes, those bytes are in that shared location on my LAN, somewhere where I've got wow. lots of space to play with. Everyone's got a box of disks somewhere, haven't they? It's, it's right, not, it's right. not special storage. It's not right. Some yeah, kind yeah, of, yeah. Know, it's not. Some it doesn't need to be ZFS and uh, you know, and box and box of SSDs and all these kind of things. Oh, cool. It's just a regular it's uh, just file a disk. share. It's just a disk. Neat. In a box, and uh, but the, the other thing that you might have spotted there was my disk.vhd. That's the differencing disk. That's right. where the changes Six. get stored. 65, 65 megs. That's all that's actually on my C drive. Wow. But, but I'm able to work with Stack Overflow using those 65 megs. So you've created multiple copies of a 100 gig database yep. and used up you know, less than a gig. That's right. Or, or maybe, yeah, less than a gig. Yeah, I want to say. Yeah. Wow. OK, that's kind of nice. I think it's nice. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So I've got, we can automate this. We've got some PowerShell. I've got some other things to show you. Right, OK, cool. Let's, get on, let's keep going, because I want to see the, the second demo is really cool. But first, I've got a couple of questions. 
Um, does SQL clone work with Azure? It's one of the first questions that came in. And yes and no. Uh, does it work with Azure SQL database as currently configured? And the answer is no. Um, that is a platform as a service currently, and there's no way for us to connect in there and, make, and do stuff like this. However cool we are, we're not that cool, because uh, that's Microsoft. However, does it work with Azure on a virtual machine? And the short answer is, yeah. yeah. Works nicely. I've got a nice proof of concept with dev test labs. Yeah, so. get, I'll get a blog post out on that shortly. That works very smoothly. Right, and then someone else says the SQL, is, so SQL clone DB is like a database snapshot that is then shared between environments. Effectively, kind of. yeah. It, it, it's a one way to think about it. It's not exactly the same thing because because you can make multiple, oh yeah, because you make multiple copies of the snapshot. All right. And you've got no, well, there's no dependency through to the source as well. Right. So it's not you're doing that shadowing thing where right. you've actually, you might go and read some production bytes if you're not careful. So I think exactly. a lot of people got trips up by that. They said, hey, cool snapshotting. I'll create a thousand snapshots of my production based on my production image. Yeah. Who, who knew that they actually hit the production <laughs> image with some write requests? You know? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, we're not doing that no. <laughs> at all. This is completely divorced. Mm. All right, so the idea here now is, is that we are, we are talking solutions. We talked problems before, but now we're talking solutions. You can get realistic data. Yes, you will need to clean this data. You can't just, you know, we're not gonna just put it out there. You're gonna to have to clean it. But you can create a copy of your copy. So you can copy down from production, say, say go against the backup, like you said. If, you know, if we're feeling real paranoid, we go against the backup. We create a copy from the backup. We then take that clean it in place. The only thing we're modifying is our own data locally, and then we make a copy of that. And then we can share that copy to all the teams with realistic data. So we've, we're answering the realistic data problem. We are radically answering the, the, small, the disk space problem. Mm -hmm. You know, these things are small. You know, I mean, it says save up to 99%. It could be more than 99%, kind of depends. But, but you know, it, it saves a lot. Let's just put it that way. Um, we're only storing the differentials and we can refresh those things as needed. So you can, you know, never have mm -hmm. to worry about stuff. You, you know, you, you start writing it, you get like, you know, well, we've written 10 or 15 gigs. Let me just nuke it and reset, you know, and now you've reclaimed that space again. It's kind of cool. You don't have to tell your team, you don't have to call the DVR. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. it could be all self-service. Um, we're talking about not sharing the environment. We're talking about isolating, you know, getting off so I can do my work, he can do his work. We're not stepping on each other. I need two copies of the database, fine. I spin up two copies of the database. It took eight seconds. I can wait eight seconds, right? Even I'm impatient and I can wait eight seconds. We've got multiple environments with tiny little clones um, all over the place and the clones don't take any time. So this is a huge, huge win. I mean, I, I, it's magic. Further, we meet regulatory compliance because we can show you can show your processes, you can get them to the auditors, and this is exactly what we do, this is exactly how we do it. No one is looking at production data and you can check it. You can validate and work it all and, and it's fine. And we do work um, with uh, dynamic data masking if you want to try that. So it's, you know, the security stuff, everything you set up for security, it's all. Yeah, it's all there. Yeah, it's, it's all a real there. data space. Um, so, talk some more. <clears throat> so, <laughs> data cleanliness. So if we're talking about taking a data image and giving it out to people, we're probably taking it from production. Right. Do we want to give them all we production want, all We the want time? production like data. Right. But we can't. The operative the, word is but like. your guy with the emails, we don't want to give him the real emails. Do no. We? No, no, not, no. Not again. Not again. So if no, you do it no, twice, no. you're going to be, yeah, yeah, then yeah, you're yeah. in trouble. Even I learned from that one. <laughs> So what can you do about it? Well, of course, you can, you can manipulate your database before you even start this whole process. You might have a sanitized copy already. Some people do. Um, you know, LMAX, the exchange, I was talking to one of their guys, the, right. the, the London Exchange, uh, where Dave Farley pretty much pioneered continuous delivery. Right. They have their own programs for sanitizing the data, for making that sanitized copy every night of all their production databases. They run their CI tests so against not, it. So nightly, so they, they, reset it. From, they reset from production, yep. cleanse it as necessary. Yep. So you might have your own scripts. About a third of people that we've spoken to have their own scripts. Yeah, but what do you do? do? What do you do once you've run the scripts? Well, what you can do with SQL Clone is you can run your scripts against a clone database, then create a new data image from that. Right. And this time is VHD chaining. You're using the virtualization features that are built into your Windows OS to take that differencing disk and add that to the repository. And next time, when you come to create a clone from the image, you're using the original bytes 
plus a small number of bytes that are the differencing disk, and you're getting the sanitized copy. Oh, uh, cool. It is cool. That's cool. It is cool. I can show you how that works. Are you going to show me how that works, yeah. or, or do we have an extra slide that we forgot I about? I suspect we have an extra slide that we forgot Let's about. Let's find out. We did. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting good at this. <laughs> Another five goes and we'll have Right, it. no problem. So the whole idea here is what we're getting to is, is do more, right? Faster, but normal restores. Smaller, but normal restores. And not with the version that we're releasing right now. I've made that mistake not, not yesterday. On today's, not on today's beta. Not on but today's coming, but coming. beta. Um, and on, a pre, on a preceding, like an early release, we already had it, and, we're, and we will have it on, on other releases, but yeah. the, the beta that's available today, um, it's not fully automatable, but it's going to be. Mm -hmm. um, fully automatable with what process? With PowerShell. PowerShell! Yes, I'm excited. So, PowerShell. Um, and by the way, if you want to take a look at this, it is in beta. You can get on, sign up to the beta program, or you can go to redgate.com slash H-O-L, which is the hands-on labs. Right, so H-O-L, redgate.com H slash H-O-L. So the idea here is that we're going to make it so you, as a data pro, and I don't care if you're a database developer, a developer, or, or a DBA, you can do more with less. Um, you can get more out the door because it's going to be smaller, it's going to be faster, it's automatable, and it can become self-service because you can put this all in a shared place, protected, mm -hmm. yep. right? We've cleaned it. It's no longer, it's no longer production data. You know, we've, we're not going to be rooming with Tiny. We're going to avoid those kinds of issues. We're not sending emails to people that shouldn't. And, um, but we're still giving it out to the dev teams, which is what we want to do. We want to support the dev teams. So now let's see it. Okay. Okay, so full disclosure, this is a different build, as, uh, as Grant said. We, the, the current build that you get on the, on the beta right now is not exactly the same as this. So this is why the commandlets, if you see these PowerShell commandlets, they look a little bit wacky, the names, but uh, yeah, they're, they're gonna, be, gonna get a bit more sensible. But, but it's there, and it's, we're just bringing it back in because we changed the API. You gotta swap, you gotta, sometimes you gotta pull something out. To Stuff something like that in, comes up. You know. um, so first of all, let's, let's just uh, tidy up my previous clones. Um, so I'm just gonna use the uh, SQL clone management interface to delete those clones. Um, the manageability kind of helps as well. You know, we can we can uh, drop things as easily as we can create them. Right. And uh, let's just just because I can, let's just do a little little loop through this uh, new instant clone, uh, new clone commandlet. Uh, let's just uh, create five of them just for fun, just because we can. <laughs> um, and let's see how long that takes. Um, I'm going to go and create five clones. I'll just get um, SQL Server Management Studio ready so I can have a look at those. Clones. That took less than 30 seconds. Okay. Should take less than that. But <laughs> okay. okay, I wasn't the counting. I the, wasn't it's counting. It's the I just... of the <laughs> okay, I've been, I've been pushing my little laptop a little bit hard there. Um, but it's, uh, it's, it's going it's to fire those clones up for me. Here they are. They're coming in now. Uh, clone zero, clone one. And um, I mentioned that you can create a new data image from a clone. So, right. so while, that's, while that's running away and uh, creating those new clones, again, this is the 100 gig database. I'm, I'm worrying about it taking seven seconds you know, instead of the four, but it's, 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 it's getting through those. Um, let's have a look at uh, what we would do to do. This is a really trivial. Did, did you hear that? I just want, I just want to emphasize, the, the dev is sweating it that it took seven seconds instead of four. <laughs> I'm a product manager. <sighs> the, the real devs will beat me up. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, let's as a DVA, I'm just I'm, like, <laughs> I'm already hyperventilating at seven seconds. Four seconds is, is way too much. I, I can't handle that. Okay, let's have a look. <laughs> uh, this is our new clone that we've just created. We created, we recreated clone so clone one. Right. And uh, we're going to. I did a select star there, like an idiot. Um, I'm going to have a look at those users. Um, right. And uh, there's uh, Spolsky and Atwood again. Let me do a really trivial bit of masking here. So, right. really, you know. You'll have your procedures, like I say, about a third of people have their proper scripts. But just to show you something really naive, I've got display name, I'm going to set some stars, about me, lorem ipsum, location redacted for those first thousand. Right. Let's just run that. That updated a few thousand, a few, uh, 752 of them. Uh, let's just have a look at what it looks like now um, when I've, uh, when I've uh, performed that. Right. And I've now, got lorem ipsum. I mean, just, to, just got, to point out, because I mean, you know, like we're, we're not hiding anything, there is a little bit of a delay there, right? That query, I mean, it's returning, you know, a few hundred rows, yeah. but, but there's, a slight, there's a slight lag. Yeah, there's, al there's always going to be, you're going to pay a little bit for the fact that those bytes are coming across the LAN. Right, okay. But we've been running this with, you know, hundreds of people in, in a prototype. Right. And they're telling us that it's, you know, it's absolutely, for most use cases, 
If you're tuning your, you know, your 12 millisecond query down to nine milliseconds, it's probably not where you want to be. Right, doing. right, right. Yeah, I mean, we're not, if, we're not talking bare metal performance. That's if, fine. If you're doing what most of us are doing most of the time as developers and testers around databases, it's working pretty fine. Right. So, you know, so, I've, so yeah, there's a little bit of latency, and it will depend on your conditions, how much latency it is, and how acceptable sure. that is to you. Sure. We think, and, it, and you we can, think it's pretty good. You know, and you know, we know it's there, and, and it's mm -hmm. just that's just an accepted part of the process. Yeah. I still saved. You know, un untold number of hours and untold number of gigabytes of storage, and and you know, yeah, now I'm paying for the price by a two second I query, th I think, a one I th second th query. Well, I'm willing to pay that price. <laughs> we think most people swallow that. So yeah. So let's take that. I said you could make a a, a new uh, data image from a clone database. So my, I, I manipulated SO clone one, and I'm going to create a new data image, and I'm going to call it Stack Overflow Masked. So this PowerShell I've just got a timer and is running this PowerShell command alert against uh, SQL clone, and it's going to create a data image called Stack Overflow Masked. Uh, let me just uh, run just the bit that I've selected. And just to explain again, if I wasn't clear before, the differencing disk is going into the data image repository, not the full 98 gig. Right. So we're, not, we, we're able to perform manipulations and just move what we changed. OK. Um, we're, not doing the, we're not doing that big piece of byte shifting over and over again. Cool. Um, so this is this is pushing the, those uh, those bytes into the data image repository, and it's done. Okay, that took twenty okay, seconds. Okay, and that was okay. So twenty seconds. Yeah. I guarantee you, on on the laptop that you're running it on, and by the way, guys, this ain't a big laptop. <laughs> um, that there's no way you did a hundred gig backup across in that time. Not no. Not on any machines I've seen. Yeah, okay. So Stack Overflow Mask was the data image we created. And now let's create a new uh, clone from that and uh, see how that pans out. And it uh, doesn't matter there. I've got a load of the repository. I've done the, I've done the demo before. Oh, you've done the demo before, so you hit, hit that <laughs> Would you believe points. it? Okay. I, so shocking. It's okay. It's not a breaking, it's not a breaking one. Right. Uh, so it's created my new clone in 10 right. seconds on my, on my local instance. And that was based on the masked one. It's the one with the changed. Right. One with the changes. So let's have a look at that. Let's run a new query on that. And on this one, let's do the top 100 star users. Never type in demos unless you're typing with prompt. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how to write SQL. Uh, star is your friend. Uh, and here we go. Oh, look, we've got the uh, masked data, the databases as we left awesome. it. Awesome. I'm not going to jail with Tiny. This is good. <laughs> <laughs> so there we go. So that's a trivial example. You can no doubt think about lots of other use cases, more, sophistic more sophisticated ways that you can use right. this kind of functionality. But once you know, you can get a database in a few seconds. You can make some changes. You can store it again for sharing with your team or for you reusing later right. in a few seconds. Wow. All these operations. OK, OK. So, so wait, hang on. A question came in. Um, and it says, what, hang on, what's it say? So, so it says, if you, what if you, the original, what would it call it? Um, not, the, not the clone, but the, the uh, data image. Yeah, the data image. If the original data image goes away, what happens to you the? You lose the data image. You, SQL Server needs to read that data, those bytes. You know, they've got to be somewhere. Right, there has so, to be someplace. Yeah, so you can't lose the data image. You can't drop the data image. We, you know, as we build out the beta, we're going to put some things around that so that you can manage the control of it. However, control. however, you can create. You don't have to create a, 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 just a clone uh, from the differentials. You can, no. you can create. Yes, and that's one of the things that we, we're, we're going to bake you, in. You, you, you can, can create say, a okay. full. You can create a full new differential. Yeah. I mean, a full new, uh, not a differential, a full, full new, new. Mm -hmm. um, 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 image yes. from the differential. Yes. So, so you're not tied to that, different, uh, to that image if you want to create a new one. Yeah. It's just you, what you're going to do is you're going to pay a little bit extra time yeah. and space. So if you space. want to cut the cord, if you want to cut the cord, if you, you, want say, to cut the cord, you no can. No dependency on that thing okay, anymore, so, then you can do that as well. So I can chain differentials or I can create a new image and go from that. That's it. Either way. Yeah. Excellent. All right. I am very, very happy. This is good stuff. <laughs> All right. So we back on the slides now? Yeah. Let's jump back on the... All right. Cool. That's okay, great. This is you. Cool. Keep those questions coming too, by the way. Um, so, oh my gosh. Um, I'm excited. <laughs> Seriously, I'm really excited about this tool. This is, this is such a huge thing. The whole idea of DevOps is that if we are going to make it so we are self-provisioning, we have to have a mechanism that allows us to self-provision. And in order to self-provision, it's, it's got to be quick. 
Mm -hmm. It's got, you know, I mean, and it's got to be small. I mean, if I'm working on my laptop, I don't have room to put 300 gigabyte databases on there. I mean, I have a nice laptop. My, you know, Redgate treats me really well. Um, I'm not complaining. It's just how much space can you have, you know, let alone the speed. So what we're talking about with Clone is, is provisioning so that it's, it's fast, provisioning so that it's automatable, not, although not the current beta, um, making it so we can do quicker development, we can do more accurate development, we can do quicker testing, we can do more accurate testing, uh, we can avoid regulatory issues, we can avoid tiny, and we've got a whole faster process. And we can, we can even take this, go to a backup, create an image off the backup for you know, um, diagnosis uh, pro problems in production. Yeah, you can do dozens of them. You can do them for different test cases, for right. different scenarios that you want I mean, to so, analyze. So we're talking a massive, massive shift in how you get stuff done. I mean, it's just not small, it's huge. We have, so hopefully, hopefully today we talked about the issues that you're gonna hit, you know, with provisioning databases, self-service provisioning, just the whole idea of disk space. I mean, it's just a gigantic issue inside a production environment. We've talked about those problems. We've talked about SQL clone and how it's a solution for those problems, directly targeting the whole DevOps DLM issue around self-service provisioning, around QA and QA self-service provisioning, you know, continuous integration, continuous delivery. Every one of these tools and processes that we've been talking about, all these methods, are all supported through this because it's fully automatable, fully provisionable, mm -hmm. self-service. I mean, everything that you want, we're, we're, we're delivering. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> now, we're not cocky about this one at <laughs> all. No, we're pretty excited about it. So. Oh, oh, no, I do want call to call to action. You. I forgot about that. There is a call to action. I forgot, I forgot, almost forgot. So, we want you to download the beta. Um, you can definitely go to redgate.com slash HOL, Hands On Labs, and play. But we'd like you to get involved with the beta program because we want to know what you need to make this work better for you. Um, so, if you go to redgate.com slash SQL dash clone, it's on the screen right now, you get it up there. Um, we need to um, make sure that you guys can get that. Um, so, so please get in touch. Now there's a question coming in and it says that I talked about providing real prod data to devs and the danger it presents, which I think is huge. Um, because we cannot just give, you cannot give pr production data to, to devs, not, not raw production data, depending on the, you know, again, depending on the dev, depending on the system, depending on the company, you know, but, but there are some serious regulations against that. It says, dissemination of PII and PHI data to devs, how exactly Clone handles it? Well, we, we, walk, we talked through it, but we'll answer the question again. Clone, by itself, does not handle that. What we do, though, is we provide a mechanism for you to do a fast restore. You can then do a cleanup of that data. Mm -hmm. It goes out to a differential disk, and then you can create a new um, image from the differential, and, and doing that is very fast, and then that differential is then has all the clean data and then you distribute the clean data. Yeah, and you can protect that how you need to protect it. It depends yeah. on, it's, it's different for everyone. There are some people who don't need to mask right. data. There is non-sensitive data out there. Right. I used to work with non-sensitive data quite a lot. <laughs> so, you know, just foreign exchange numbers. It's, sure. It doesn't matter, it's okay. Everyone knows what Euro was yesterday. Right. But the, uh, but if you are working with sensitive data, you might want to perform that change. You might want to make a full data image. You might want to flush the logs so there's no trace right. there. And so you might want to copy all the data into a new image, a new, uh, a new database before you perform this so that you've got no trace. So the MDF file has never had that data in it. Exactly. It depends so on we, you. So we answer all those needs about that question and, and deal with it directly. And so I just want to say um, the SQL in the City is going to continue. There's a whole bunch of more stuff coming up. Uh, I believe uh, next is uh, Mickey, right? No? Steve. Oh, Steve Jones first. Oh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> I lost track. Um, and so um, please keep watching and um, thank you.